Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another post uh, night shift ER COVID update. Uh, I'm working uh, this entire weekend, so I'll probably post another video tomorrow. I uh, thought I'd give everybody an update about what's going on. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, COVID, uh, some new monoclonal antibodies against Omicron, also about the increased risk we're seeing in the year following COVID infection in terms of cardiovascular disease in February is Heart Health Month. And so that's a good point to, to bring up. And then tomorrow I'm going to talk about my thoughts about immunization for young kids and boosters for older kids because I'm not very happy with the data on there. Well, that's that's tomorrow. So today um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the emergency department and also a couple of those other topics. Um, for those of you new to this, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine doctor. I've been reporting about COVID and what we're seeing actually in the hospital since the pandemic began. Uh, I also run a functional medicine clinic in Charlotte. Uh, I work part-time in the emergency department still because I kind of addicted to it. Um, so what's going on in the ER? Well, our numbers are getting better. We're seeing less COVID than we were. We're still seeing it, but instead of seeing having, you know, 40 COVID patients in the department at one time, maybe we have 10. Um, we're largely seeing mild cases in those who are immunized. The only sick people we're seeing are unimmunized and largely those people are, are people who have been are unimmunized and have never had a prior infection. So prior infection and immunization both give, you know, seem to be fairly protective against you getting sick enough to have to come into the, be admitted to the hospital. If you're not immunized and you haven't had an infection, you're at high risk. And that's primarily what we are admitting um, are those unimmunized people. Um, in terms of you know, the ER itself, it's still really busy because it's the winter time and this is our busy time. So we still don't have a lot of beds and um, we're still boarding a fair number of people in the ER, but it's not nearly as bad as it was, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So things are looking up. I'm cautiously optimistic. I really do think we're probably getting to the end of this. At this point, uh, you know, people who are either not been infected or not been immunized are kind of few and far between. And so as those numbers go down, I think we're going to have lots of, you know, mild COVID and we may have more, more rounds of variants, but I don't think it's going to really require us to be as diligent with masking and lockdowns and things like that we've done in the past. I want to talk a little bit about um, Eli Lilly just came out with a, you know, one of the problems with the monoclonal antibodies, they work really well. Um, and they work great for Delta, but when Omicron came out, the, the two main ones we used for Delta suddenly didn't work anymore. They had no effect on Omicron. And we just had one to Talimab that did work and it's in short supply. Well, Eli Lilly has just come out with a new one and uh, you know these antiviral names are really hard. It's called uh, Bebtelovimab. Say that three times fast. Um, and that one has been approved and it's been shown to be effective um, in Omicron. Needs to be given within the first seven days of symptoms. I think it's for ages 12 and above um, for people with mild to moderate symptoms. We another, have another treatment tool for that. Secondly, today I want to talk about um, a very interesting study that came out in Nature Medicine looking at cardiovascular risk in people after they've had COVID. And it turns out that your risk of having a cardiovascular problem post COVID is very high. And it seems like it stays elevated for at least a year afterwards. And this study um, was interesting. They looked at about 153,000 COVID patients and they looked at their rates of cardiovascular disease and they compared it against two groups. They compared it against a group of five point, um, I wanna make sure I get my numbers right here, 5.6 million people that um, did not have COVID and followed them for that same period of time. And they also looked at another group of 5.9 million people that were followed for a year pre-COVID. So, you know, so nobody in that group could have possibly had COVID. So that's sort of a really good blinded group. And what they found was interesting, um, significant increase in risk of having heart related problems in the year after um, COVID. Um, and that includes risk of pulmonary embolism, blood clots in the um, legs, stroke, heart failure, um, and heart attacks. And, you know, and interesting, your risk of developing heart failure um, in the year following a COVID infection went up by 72%. Your risk of having a heart attack is up by 63%. And your risk of having a stroke is up by 52%. Um, and those 
risks actually were up in people that even had, you know, you know, relatively mild disease. Um, and it, it crossed all age groups, young, old, it crossed all racial groups as well. Um, black, Hispanic, white, and also you know, people who are obese, not obese. It seems like cardiovascular risk increases for all of those people. So if you've had COVID and you're developed chest pain, low threshold to get that checked out, you know, as soon as possible. Again, your best protection is immunization because we know that immunization, A, cuts down on symptoms, but also, you know, reduces your chance of getting COVID by about five times. So um, you can get breakthrough cases with immunization, but they're far less um, frequent than people that are unimmunized. Um, the vast majority of those people that are at risk are unvaccinated, and I don't have to belabor that point. Um, that's it for tonight. I will be back tomorrow with another thing. We're going to talk about pediatric um, immunizations the, uh, and uh, also uh, my thoughts about boosters and things in kids. Um, I'm Dr. Galvin. I will talk to you tomorrow. Stay safe. I'll talk to you soon.